Good evening. Welcome to the Sunderland Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is Monday, March 12, 2018. And first up on our agenda, we have Rachel Lepake here for the Personnel Committee to discuss some stuff. Um, and do you want to give a little brief intro of what we've been up to? Or Okay. Um, we've been working since we started last year and primarily working on looking at um, adjusting a number of things. Uh, probably the primary thing has been the pay grades to bring us at least we essentially kind of come up with a target we want to keep ourselves competitive with our competing towns and we're trying to get ourselves up to the middle of the pack essentially uh, because we're we find that we're falling behind in a number of positions and so that's one of the things we've been working on and we've been looking at other things to help maintain our personnel um, in, in a competitive environment I think that about some time. Well, and that includes looking at, at job descriptions where necessary too, because we have been we're looking at adjusting a couple of those. So, um, and then also setting up because I don't know, probably every five years or so we kind of go through these gyrations of doing the salary reviews and everything. And like the established setup that we have in there for um, doing the colas, we want to come up with some kind of um, systematic way to approach doing these reviews. That gives us some kind of credibility in terms of we're not kind of reinventing things each time and everything. So any kind of systematic way that we, that'll help us do that, I think, would be a good thing. So um, we've been meeting and we've come up with a list of recommendations based on that, and Rich is going to present those great findings for us. So I guess I can add some thoughts to that. This is of course a subject that's uh, not new to anybody in the room here. So it's a, it's a subject that uh, is important and we wrestle with, been wrestling with for several years. And uh, so we took a look at, this is a cycle for, uh, for this year, uh, the definition, <coughs> mission, mission statement for this committee is advisory and giving our opinions and seeing what happens to those. Uh, the areas that you can cover in the, this particular committee are quite broad. There's a lot of things you can do with the organization, with people, with uh, compensation, and so on. So our little group, picking up from the past years, uh, looked look fairly closely at what we've been doing and how it's worked. Some of it is in place, some of it is not. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a challenge year to year. Uh, we, what we ended up doing was zeroing in on three, three aspects of a complex problem. One being uh, compensation and what it takes to keep ourselves competitive in, the, in this field. And the co it's a, competition is rough. People are going to want a lot of good people coming up in the future and we're going to have to be competitive. Uh, most of the data we have now shows that we, we're operating with just about everybody but one or two people. We're operating at, at the level of 50% penetration and compensation or lower. And we only have one or two people, I think, that are out, outside that range. So it's pretty clear that we've had, we have a gap in what we've been doing uh, in the, the idea of just paying somebody. Now, over the last few years, it's got even more complicated because there's a, another component of compensation, which is benefits. And we know that there are some pieces of the benefit package that are priced and difficult and challenging to make work financially for us. We have to do a little bit there too. So we've got a piece of our recommendation coming uh, relative to compensation for for people, uh, including the benefit side. We'll come back to that as we move forward. Uh, and then it's the idea of how do we do this year over year? Uh, some people call it programmatic approach. And so we've got the pieces of a programmatic approach, but we don't really have it in place. And one of the pieces of, of uh, comprehensive approach and uh, programmatic is that generally we know we got the money before we decide what to do. It. It's the flip of finding money at the end of the year and just get by. This uh, pro programmatic approach would mean that uh, we know we'll have so many dollars each year. It's sort of programmatic like the uh, uh, capital side of the story. We, we, did, we did a tremendous job in Scott and the, and the people here at the table have done a great job over the last few years of taking capital 
and changing it from one piece of paper with uh, a little bit of backup to a well thought out plan with goals and long term places to be uh, and having an idea of how much money you have coming out of uh, the tax uh, revenues, uh, what that's going to be. And also, you can look strategically at the capital plan and see a good long range picture of what's going on. So that's what we mean by being pro programmatic. But we want to be programmatic for the people side as well. And we have capital and you have compensation for people. So we want to be programmatic in the, in the people side. So that means we have to maybe step back a, a bit and, and go at it a little differently. So what we have is our first recommendation is to uh, pursue, pursue uh, having some expertise and having some resources to actually develop this idea of what a programmable approach is and lay it out there and then see if we can kind of go from that year after year, year after year. So the recommendation and the approach is based on bringing in some expertise. We would bring in, number one, people have done this before and have some reputation. So you've got expertise, you have uh, objectivity, I would say. It's, the programmatic approach with the way we want to go about it uh, has this idea of independence. Someone that's going to look at this is not you and I, people in the town, but someone that can stand back and, and see how this all fits together. So there's a legitimacy of confidence that comes from having a, a reputable organization that uh, does the effort to get the programmatic approach in place. So uh, Sherry has been doing some work uh, exploring what, who could come in and do this work for us. And uh, the recommendation we have is suggesting that uh, we have about $5,000 in a plan that would bring home fairly quickly the first version of the programmatic approach. So highly recommend we do that. Uh, before I go on, any questions? Any, uh, do you think that would be a, not the greatest thing to do here? So the did you um, did you put together a scope that you would you would have for the uh, the expenditure of the five thousand dollars? So if you hired these um, people to come in, have you guys looked at a scope yet? Well, Sherry, you have a scope. Yes, I think it's going to be still flexible. We got to do some other things in, in, in addition to it. But this is five thousand is based on a preliminary scope. Okay. Because I would think you'd have to have everything on the table, right? I mean, maybe maybe we're putting maybe work to maybe there things are open too many hours. Maybe we have to reduce schedules. Because because how how do you, how do you? I guess my question is how do you ba balance affordability? In you know you can you can say that you're you can say that you're you're paying a uh, a certain group that should be increased, but how do you how do you talk about or how do you define what something is affordable. How, how, how do you know if it's affordable? Well, part of affordability kind of comes with how you evaluate something and, and it's, it's value to the town. So right. part of what these things do is sort that out to some degree and put some priorities on some jobs that got more horsepower and do more than, than other jobs. So I believe the way these, uh, it's almost like steps, but it's not exactly how it'll come out. But it's a way of sorting out the value of positions and then sticking to them and watching your position in the competition in terms of what other towns are doing and upgrading your uh, matrix for, for affordability or financing for the program. So uh, there, there are examples of how this works. We wouldn't be the first town doing this. So it uh, sort of comes out in the explanation of how the process comes out. And I think one of the things too is is the time that somebody like a group like that can spend on it versus what we can spend. They've got a lot more time to spend doing a good job on it. I think. Yeah. And, and as Sherry knows it's like pulling teeth trying to get data from other towns to get comparable information. It's been pretty tough. And then we get different years, even though we ask for you know people have FY seventeen hours different and hours, and right? right? So that hopefully somebody can you know help support and sift through that information, because a number of towns have done this in the past. Right. I think your point is a good one, that uh, having someone else do it, and do it faster than we can, better than we can do it, 
And we got some limited resources in town that are pretty good at what they do. And that's what they should be doing, setting up stuff, not doing the work of calculating all the numbers and figuring out exactly how everything comes out. So it's a better use of our resources to have someone else do it. Do you, do you have uh, multiple firms that you're looking at to, to have? Is it, is it possible to have a, like a bidding? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just yeah. have a quote to give us a budget number. Yeah, we have at least two two organizations, right? And by the time we get done with this, we probably have a, a few more. I think I think we if we pursued this, as, we'd have it quite visible to to everybody here, and maybe get input from the employees and the taxpayers and everybody. So I I envision it as an open process of trying to determine. What does reflect how we understand value and how we how we kind of get the job done? Right, because we'll essentially make a recommendation as the committee, but it's really when you talk about affordability, but largely that affordability is determined by the town and what we decide as taxpayers that we think is affordable. And, you know, that's and what what we're willing to pay. Now, it may not be what those positions should get in the competitive marketplace, but. That's the price that we're going to have to we're going to have to deal with the consequences for that. But hasn't the town already decided what's affordable? They haven't passed an override. Yeah, right. Well, haven't hasn't the town already defined defined affordability? Where? Where 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 do we define it? Well, the, David was saying David was just saying that the the town has to define of what's affor, of affordability. My question is, well, hasn't the town already defined what affordability is? Well, we kind of essentially have to redo that every year when we have town meeting. Okay. Um, I think there's, there's Tom, to correct me if I'm wrong, I think what I'm hearing about affordability and hours and compensation, there's, there's, there's an underlying tension between all of that, right? In, a, in, a, mm -hmm. in an ideal exercise, we would be on par or just above par with all of our job grades across all of the competing markets. Now, on a personal level, I struggle with the fact that a municipal environment is a competing market. But that's that's me personally. That's how do we compare against other like services in other communities? And I think the like services oftentimes gets lost. Right? It ends up being job job grading. Everybody does it a little bit differently. Right. And the affordability part, if I think what I'm hearing Tom say is. You know, we, we've gone for not expanding of services. We've gone to the town and saying, we, want, we very much would like to pay for the services that you currently have. And we've been told no on a handful of occasions. So at what point is there, is there a tension? I, I suggest there's a tension between what, this, what a study, and I endorse the notion of bringing someone in to look at it comprehensively. I just put that right out there. But if we bring that forward and say it means and I'll be hypothetical, uh, extra hours at the highway department and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And the town says, now we're not going to pay for it. Well, then isn't that a definition of affordability by the, by the, by the larger mass? I think one of the problems, though, is that when, it, when we're measuring it only as an affordability question in terms, if you're, if you're only measuring it in terms of the question of an override and the whole budget altogether, the town is only receiving it all at once and they're not they're not at least a program like this is allowing it to to look at each individual element and to separately be able to possibly put different values to see if maybe the town has different values different questions of affordability in different regards I think affordability there, this, if I could, Dave, uh, the, the tension there is between affordability and perceived value. Yeah. I, I might advocate for the library. Tom might advocate for the wastewater treatment plant. That doesn't advocate for the whole budget. Yeah. You know, and that's that's and that's there's an inherent there's an inherent risk with that. You know, if, if you look at if you look at our budget, um, the highway to I mean, there's still there's still people in the town the town office building is not open five days a week. Town office buildings open what to the public thirty hours. Town office buildings only open to the to the thirty thirty two hours whatever it is a week. The highway department um, just gained back. They just went back to forty hours what two years ago. Two years. Well, the last two hours were last year. 
last, yeah, last year. So, so the high, now who, who advocates for the highway department? Besides us, and, and we keep going back. We try to put it in if, if we don't have the money to put it. So it, it, so there's not. Sometimes it's not. I know what you're saying, but sometimes there's, it's not fair that that the wastewater treatment plant may not be a a, a, a glamorous thing to support, but it still needs it still or the highway department. But I would say the highway department, if they're not out there fixing potholes. There's a there's a lot of people would be complaining because your car is damaged much more than sure. the, the town office our buildings are open 40 hours a week so I, I mean it I think it's an interesting conversation to have uh, yeah. I, this, this, good. Um, no well I think part of it is is something too though is we can't right. just stop because we've determined that something was affordable or not affordable one year right. we can't just stop and give up and walk away. We, we, we have a responsibility to look at this yeah. every, you know, however many years. And if the town decides they don't want to pay for that and it's not affordable, that's another issue entirely. But that doesn't release us from our responsibility to make sure that we're paying people appropriately. And one of our concerns, too, is, is, is that the group of people that we're looking at aren't represented by unions and don't have that kind of representation, and they keep falling behind. And if we decide, I mean, all we can do is make the recommendations based on a programmatic approach. If the town decides it's not affordable, and we, like I said, we have to do this every year. We have to determine what's affordable and what's not affordable. So it's not a one-time exercise. And if, if that's the determine that the town make, determination the town makes, then that's fine. But it's also, you're making that determination knowing full well that, okay, this is what we have decided to do. We have decided to not pay people at a competitive rate and then so be it and then that's the consequences that we live with <clears throat> there's a relatively small amount of people that are in this discussion i think it's 13 yeah 12, 13. positions so this is to bring those people that are part of our organization and are important to the same level of penetration into compensation as the others that have uh, Fire department has a union. School school has a union. They they get represented by a little bit of horsepower where this group of people do not. So there's a kind of an obligation to be fair and have integrity in terms of how you how you handle employees. And it doesn't seem kind of the right way to go where you you have some people getting one level of a, uh, recognition by the, their compensation and also by things like the COLA and the others do not. What's the difference between the two? So there's a fairness issue that needs to be looked at here as well. And I, I would say if you ask the town, do we want to be fair? I think uh, most of us, of us would say, yeah, yeah, sign me up for that. So you, you have to face that. You have to explain to people if, if you don't want them to be represented like the others in the town, uh, what, what, what would you say? How, how, do you, how would you handle? No, I would, well, what's your? idea of how you have a legitimate uh, hey um I, i've been fighting for just compensation for our 13 people for 20 years i i would say that i haven't had support from the town when we go to town meeting to get that to vote for that and, and we've talked about that mm -hmm. i remember 20 years ago sitting in a town meeting when we were talking about a police set a police increase Police at the time were making six dollars and eighty cents or so an hour. Two guys in front of us were saying, uh, "We can't give people, you know, can't keep giving these <coughs> guys." And I look and I says, "Do you know how much God those guys make? They make six dollars and eighty cents, or something to that effect." Twenty years ago, to put on, kiss your wife goodbye, put on a gun, and go out and walk the street. I don't think raising to give them a twenty percent increase in their salary is a lot of money. So I've been fighting for twenty years, but I'm also trying to say is that is that. You, you have to look at you have to look at reality also if, if you looked at specifically look at the school school budget this year if you look at the school budget this year the the um, the increase of um, salary increase negotiated salary we'll call cola the whole whatever package, yeah. what I, all right plus steps is is over two and a half percent. We only can rate. We can only raise and appropriate two and a half percent. Yeah. 
plus one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, right? So if if those wages exceed, if those increases exceed our ability to tax, and there's seven, and and schools are about seventy percent of the budget, sixty-five to seventy percent of the budget, seventy percent of their budget of the school budget is labor. We're in the we're in the whole, so we don't have we don't have the we don't have the resources, Richard, unfortunately, to to keep um, spending. Um, and and I I would say that, that to me the one of the hard the one of the hardest things is and 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 unfortunately or unfortunately most of the people that that pay taxes in the, in the town of Sunland don't have to go up to their employees and say and and look them in the eye and say you don't get a raise this year guess what I have to the board of selectmen have to do that because of the reaction or the way the town meeting either votes at town meeting or during the annual elections where an override is considered. It's it's easy to go behind it's easy to go go behind the curtain and go no and in, and and that's the end of it and then you can tell people whatever you want we're, we're the ones that that have to address the, the people the the highway department and such that they're not going to get a rate and I would say that that typically we've done everything in our power to I think I think in twenty years it's only been a couple of years where we had a zero percent increase in wages and even those you don't hear us a lot. In those couple of years where we had zero increases for COLA, the other towns were paying people for COLA. COLA. And as soon as you get that dynamic going where mm -hmm. one person is getting something, the other person is getting zero, Absolutely. you develop a mismatch that will never, almost never be caught up with. You're, so, you're absolutely right. So why not try the idea of putting it out there uh, with the understanding that if the taxpayers say no, so be it. But why, why take the position now as a, as a board selectman of we already know that we can't afford this? Because this is no different than some of the other things on the agenda right now. We don't have enough money for half the stuff we've been talking about. So why make a special occasion, a special topic for this, top, this group of people? I, I don't see how that's consistent. I, 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 I look at it how... Um, I, I can look at David. I can look at Scott. I know David and Scott pretty well, and how they voted over the years. I don't think either one of them think that they're that uh, anybody in the town of Sunland's overpaid. Do you think you're overpaid? You're probably, and, and most of our people are underpaid. And in the uh, in other town, the three people up here say that that they don't. We don't need anybody to tell us to spend five thousand dollars to tell us that we should be paying people more because we already know that. I guess that's that's my thing. So, our, and, and we're trying, and and if you pub, if, if anybody looks at the annual report, where they can get and find it online or get a copy, come in and get a copy and look at the wages that we pay anybody. There's there's no one that's there's no one that's getting rich. We and we know that. We all know that. I, no, we, we well we say it because we see the people but there's people out there that think that, that if you work for the town of Sunderland or the town of Deerfield or the town of whatever that you're that you're making out very well financially you're not you're only getting 55 now you're gonna get me going but now you only get you we're only paying 55 percent we're, we're only paying 55 percent of health care no other town pays 50 around us no other town pays 50 and and Scott and I because David wasn't on the board I think Mike Wismas was on the board at that time we fought like the Dickens to get that five percent that five well, percent that's, that's one of the things we're tr we're trying to mention and, again. And, and we know we we want to and you know still Scott, puts us Scott in the had talked to Scott had talked to Sherry Scott had talked to Sherry about trying to get it worked up to six percent and Sherry was trying or sixty percent trying to see if we get up to sixty percent this year and that, in fact, is our third recommendation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> can I, can I Sorry, Richard. Yeah, yeah. I, but, but, yeah, you're, I mean, you're right. Why, why, why not put it out there to have voters decide? Why what would they decide, though, Richard? I mean, how, I mean, you, you need... You, I, I understand let's that. Make, let's make it a, a standalone item. Let's say this, this set of recommendations is a tab of 35000 Why not put it on the table and say... Do, do the citizens want to pay that for this idea of compensating the employees here? Why not ask the question? Uh, Scott just had a... Actually, if I, if I could weigh in, uh, I'll go back two and a half minutes on you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, Richard, uh, one of the things that you said, and we've worked together for a long time, you and I, I don't think anybody here 
presumes the answer is no when, when colas or raises or steps come up for, for people inside of uh, general government. Or, right? I don't think that's the case. I would ask, though, um, if we're going to spend blank on, and again, five, it's 5K for uh, compensation review, can we make it 8 or 10K and do all the town employees to see how mm -hmm. we look up across? We could. All, yeah. even, even even the organized pool because kind of we, we have said for years you know uh, there's a, there's a there's a big piece of the pie that's this category and that's you know education public safety whatever pick whatever that piece of the pie is and we advocate for a smaller piece of the pie and yet the big piece of the pie and again in this case here ends up being education drives much of the narrative right, right. that said if there was an expansion of this so that future negotiators, municipal negotiators, whether it's public safety, mm -hmm. whether it's education, that either the districts can say, actually district, you guys are pretty well done at, or not well compensated compared to your peers. I'd actually endorse that because the, the largest pool of our employees is, is over there. Is education. Oh, yep. yeah. And we're, we're treating it like we can't talk about it because I agree. the right. contract is signed. Exactly right. Next year we say we can't talk about it because yep. we don't have a contract. Right. I agree. That's so a great. It's, it's twenty-two. Here. That's a great point. And and I, again, I really, I really, I really value the notion of bringing that, you know, bringing that extra set of eyes in. And maybe it's eye-opening across all of it. I would also, if I could add the last piece, we have part of our global budget discussion, which the board hasn't completely completed yet. Well, frankly, I haven't even completely got into yet. We have in there this year a, a five percent increase in the match of healthcare, and we're going to have that discussion. Finance committee may not want to hear it, but it's 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 in there right now as as one of the things that can that can you know help with uh, all of our staff. Yeah, that will be good. So again, sorry. Can I, can I yeah. Play back on what you said, Scott. I think I think you said it well. Uh, if this could be a total town, all of it. Right. I like that idea. Uh, that, that doesn't take anybody off the stage. We're yep. all in it together for all the various ways we think that the town is important for yep. us and the elements of the town that are important for us. Matter of fact, we we were in our discussions. We backed into the idea of uh, satisfying some of our employees, but not all, is not workable. Right. And we we actually role played for a while with ourselves, mm -hmm. trying to figure out how I could get up there and explain explain to everybody else that you're in. I'm, we're going to get you uh, raised, but you're not. Right. You're in, and you're right. not. Right. So it should be all or nobody. Right. It's perceived winners or losers in that exercise. And it's perceived right. only because there's no malice. It's just like, well, we're strong advocates for yeah. the wastewater treatment plan. And, yeah. you know, whatever. Pick, pick us jobs. You, you had a question? <clears throat> I think if we're going to invest in this kind of study, then I'd like <clears throat> us to be thinking two or three steps out. And what are we going to do? I mean, let Let's assume we're not going to be surprised and find out that everyone is being paid adequately or is being overpaid. So that what we find out is basically kind of what we know. Right. That people, at least in most of the positions, are underpaid. What are we doing with that information next year before right. it gets to be dated and sure. is irrelevant sure. to push forward actual action on these items? Well, I think it would be a two-pronged thing because we we're not planning on just doing it right. and then looking at it. Because the whole reason we're asking for it is so that we can take some kind of action. And whether it's to just say, okay, everything is okay, or whether then we need to recommend looking at, you know, bumping some up or whatever, or whatever the case is. Th that's the whole point. And it's, and to one of your earlier points too, it's extraordinarily difficult to say, I want to compare this position in my town. And let's just say you've got your list of comp towns. Sure, sure. It's been we found it's really difficult to compare it to another one because there's very little that's exactly the same mm -hmm. from one to the other. So at some point you have to say, all right, well I'm going to accept up to X percent parity with a given position. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's that that's been one of the challenges, and hopefully bringing some professional in will be able to help help us do that because that's been kind of a challenge you look and you say all right well you know what this one's mostly like it but not and there's been there's been some interesting variances and then trying to get information and, and i'm still i find it mind-boggling that this information isn't captured in a public easily accessible database somewhere because it's all squirreled off to the side and it 
It makes it, a, it really should not be this difficult to do this in this day and age when we have all this technology available. It's, it's kind of absurd that we have to go through all these gyrations, but that's just my frustrating moment. I, mean, I think what that. I'm asking is that if we're going to invest in this now, then are we making a commitment, at least in this room, that next year, you know, that we are going to put an emphasis on dealing with uh, salary compensation? And maybe that, be, you know, if it's, then that, does that become a, uh, uh, a plan? A plan. Well, I mean, it, it's it become, really part does of it. it. Does that become a, okay, if we find out we have a problem, we're going to go for a line item override and try to really deal with it or because the fact is if we know if we find out we have a problem there's not going to mysteriously be more money in the budget next year so we're going to be at kind of where we are every year in this room we want to do something we don't have the money to do it try to pass it override it doesn't pass so i guess i i just would like to know are we then committed to this being sort of our primary one of our primary goals for the budget for the following year? First of all, there's no report, so I'm not going to comment on yeah. it. Yeah. I think, I think I'm more optimistic that we'll be able to actually have money to do something with. I think it has, has to come from a established source of funding, like the capital plan does and the CPA does. It says that every year, uh, out of the taxes coming in, we set aside our $10,000 or $20,000 against four or five topics, and we run it very similar in the process to how those other operations are run. And it, the money is not stolen. You can't get in there and get it out. It, I don't know if you have to have an article on this or you have to do something at the ballot box, but the idea would be it, it would be as protected as, say, the, the capital plan dollars are, where we're spending our, month, our time trying to figure out how to use the money. We're not arguing about whether the money is there or not. It came out of the tax base and pulled out and set aside for capital plans, capital projects. Sort of like what we do when we say we do we put X percent out of free cash, in other words, like that, yeah. to something. Yes, and the, mon the money we could be asking for should be small enough that if using partial pr uh, free cash, you, pr you have the potential of doing it and not messing up the whole rest of the operation. But it's, can, I, can, I play, yeah. can I be the other side? I'm, I'm cursed being a Libra. I'm just the way it is. At some point, we get to the end of the plan, and invariably, job positions top out, right? They just do. I just Right, you hit the at, top at, of your grade. At some, or at some point, you simply don't make any more money in that job. Right. I, I would hope that a compensation plan isn't, isn't designed to simply be a vehicle for continued escalation in the payroll cost to the town. Again, uh, no, no offense to Catherine, she should make $100 an hour, but at some point she tops out at $100 an hour and it doesn't turn into $120 an hour. I have employees who are at their job grade <clears throat> and then after that, it's incentives and that's all it is because they're at their job grade. And we're talking about 24, 27, $31 an hour. Because at some point, and this is a really simple service business model, at some point, someone named David goes, you're charging me $93 an hour? What are you out of your mind? Right. Well, it's like that in the and private again, I sector. I use those as, as, as hypotheticals, but at some point, they have to cap out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would agree. I mean, it, you run into that in the private sector. You hit the top of your salary grade, that's it. And then it's, you know, if you have bonus programs, you get that. But otherwise, it's like, then you can choose to stay or not so stay. So, yeah, again, I think a plan is important, and it's important to have it's important to have good information behind that. But I would, I would hope that it's not, an, it's not an, uh, an evergreen process that just keeps rolling yep. forward. Go ahead. Sorry, Catherine, I had a hand up. And I meant the $100 an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying we don't have any kind of steps in place right now. So Correct. hopefully we could get it. Like if we're doing this, maybe we get a plan where we are in steps or something. Sure. Because of, yeah, I agree with you. It's got to be, I mean, there has to be some end point. But right. right now there's no process whatsoever. And that's a better description actually. They went topping out or capping out. But I think end point makes a great deal of sense. Where are we today? What's the goal? And you know, what are the steps to getting to the goal? Good point. I, 
I see this very much as being alive and active as a process. Actually, okay. So that we will have people that are responsible for selecting could be the ones that decide each year, like you would do in private industry, the runners of people that run the business decide how many dollars to set aside for the employees. And it's a reflection of the state of the economy. It's a reflection of how good the business went. And so there's a lot of factors that are brought into play where the senior people of a business sit down and part of their job is to figure out how much money is going to be distributed out to the, uh, to the players, to the people that are company. This would be the same thing. We would say we've got a capital plan, a personal plan, and we, uh, we have an organization that watches over it and is deciding that we've gone far enough or this one is going to be something totally new. And it could become a very live way of dark, closing out stuff and bringing in new stuff with new def new definitions for the job and new object objectives and uh, more and more work. We, and we even got a sheet of what those things could be. We could work in the area of shared services with other towns. We could work in the area of uh, computer-based new ways of doing things, like working at home or doing other things. So if we think of this not as a one-time event to like just get what we can do as best we can what we've got, and convert it into a process where it's active. And we're looking at things the way we can do it better and things the way we, we could have people come and go and uh, be, be attractive enough to have people come here and say, I want to work over there because they, they, they're very creative. They pull this off, they've done that, they've done that. And so you've got a different level of understanding of what's going on here and you can get some mileage on it. Well, it also makes it a more challenging environment for the, for the workers. In Absolutely. That sense, following Absolutely. along those lines. And to sort of your point, too, you know, we often hear, oh, well, we should be running things more like a business. Well, that's exactly what we're kind of suggesting in this aspect, is to treat it more like that. But to one of your points, Lauren, and no matter what, though, we even if we make a plan, we still have to go up to, and deal with the vote in that respect. So that will never change. That's always going to be, no matter how we feel about that, that's still a part of the process we'll never get around so we're gonna have to deal with that but i think a lot of times we <clears throat> hash out things you know in this setting and we go to town meeting and it's not always clear to people what what we've all given up in the process of getting there and i think if this is going to become a priority then one thing that you have to make clear to people is this is why it's a priority you know and we're, we don't want to give it up this year um, mm -hmm. i mean i think a lot of times we all that you know I know we back off the things before we get here, and then we back off the things again before it gets into the budget. So the budget that town approves is not exactly, not, not the ideal. It's what you're, you know, what is the compromise. Well, I don't want to use the whole night here, but that was a great conversation about the, the process itself. Do we have enough of, of an understanding, do you think, that we could go for this bigger idea of how this works and then uh, Chunk up a little starting point for us here. What I'm hearing is that there's uh, at least feelings out there for a pair of, a pair of uh, experts, consultants, whatever they are, other government agencies that can review it. I would, I would suggest that at some point, again, uh, advocate for the, about the whole the whole nut that is all, everybody who's on the payroll, yeah. all of it. Contract I like to that idea. Contract yeah. to public documents. Yeah. I mean, sure, sure. That makes it more comprehensive, and then t it takes away some of the grief and the pain points that we've had to deal with, right. and only looking at certain aspects of it. We found that it was very hard to make this choice of so your your department and your position will get two or three percent, and you over there will get five, and you will get. It's very very hard to do. Right, and then it's like okay, separate out the union positions, and well, what about the elected positions? And, and this way, you look at it holistically rather than just. As a matter of fact, in the third piece of this conversation is COLA and the consistent, consistent way of handling that. Because we're talking about three, possibly three COLAs for Sunderland, right? There's something wrong with that picture in my mind. Right? You know, all we need is one COLA. Right, for the, yeah. Right? So we've got the dollars in here to do that. Uh, the school is, is what, at uh, 2.7 or something like that? This year? Yeah. This year? Mm -hmm. And the uh, fire, <coughs> I mean the police? Uh, they are, uh, this is the last year, this is the last year of three for them. 
and three. Now the question is what does Sunderland offer its other employees? Seems to me it could start with the discussion of whether it's three or two and a half or whatever. But it seems to me we could start this year with a consistency to that. And then you got Frontier too. They have one too. Well, yeah, because they've got their. I'm just trying to look to see what their increase was, but it, and it's it's difficult pulling into education because you don't know who's moving across scales and yeah. you have to look at the aggregate. Challenge. It is a challenge. Well, I think it would be a a good sync assist single back to everybody if we do do one vote. Mm -hmm. I I think three percent is a reasonable thing to talk about. Mm -hmm. We have the the. Uh, the environment itself, uh, the financial wizards all around are pretty much saying that you can expect some inflation to pop in. Mm -hmm. Something's going to happen. Yeah, pop. this year. We already know that there's other people in other towns in here are talking about their cola coming up, and they're not talking about 2%. So we miss, we, if we don't get on that bandwagon a little bit, we, we lose a bit there. And uh, waiting for our big picture thinking to work out. And at the same time, not offering a good compensation for employees, that doesn't smell too good either in terms of, of not delivering any real delivery dollars. So if you put that together in the, the three elements of this little story that we've been talking about, they fit together and uh, we can go and get by a little bit and not do much or we can go after the, the, the whole story. That's, that would be our recommendation to the board of select okay did you ever hand up did you ever hand up oh okay sorry i thought i saw a hand up okay. now i know that the hardest part of this thing is making the budget balance sure mm -hmm. so we don't talk about that that's we we don't know what to do about that any more than probably where you guys are so let's put it out there well, while you're on the on the on the personnel again, this this body hasn't discussed it yet. But as as Tom mentioned earlier, I've I've asked Cherry for um, what does a five percent increase in the match the town pays for its health insurance mean to people who participate. I understand that, and that that's a way of getting after the right hand column of the personal ledger of a of a staff member who might see an increase in their health care out of pocket mm -hmm. may exceed that actual two percent and that's something that we're, we still have to discuss here tonight or we have to discuss in the next few weeks we do have two budgets here in front of us and one of them does include five percent increase and it's something the board has to talk about Great. Great. Now one more piece of paper if you don't mind i got an inspirational quote here it's from somebody from like 1861 given us advice. It's about capital and about labor. It goes like this. Labor is prior to and independent of capital. Capital is only the fruit of the labor and never can be the, anything except that. If, if labor has, doesn't exist at all, labor is the superior of capital and deserves much higher consideration. So this is Abraham Lincoln saying mm -hmm. something about the Sunderland budget. There you go. <laughs> I, would, I, would, I would pile on that with Marcus Aurelius. And he, wrote, he wrote, be mindful of others' humanity. Very nice. There you go. Thank you. And, uh, so I'd like to say that Rich has been a great asset to the personnel committee this year. We really appreciate uh, all your efforts. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Richard. All right. So now we have, I, I'm guessing that you would be Wendy. Yes. <laughs> so you pop in. We're a few minutes late. Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. I was waiting out Thanks, there. Richard. I wasn't okay. sure if I should come in or not. No, it's so. all right. May as well be comfortable. I know what you want to do. We're going to talk about employee health proposals right now. Oh, Come on down. Hey, Wendy. Hello. How are you? Good, good. Yeah. Uh, let me just get myself situated here. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Wendy. Hello. Oh, okay, great. 
if there is others, I'll say otherwise I'll take it. That might be good just to hang on for the personnel committee, too. Okay. Yeah, I can take Okay. All right. Good. How are you? Good. Okay, so I put a few things together that might help um, you know, kind of clarify, you know, the cost savings that Maya could provide a town. Um, now, are you all familiar with Maya? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, okay, Greg, I wasn't sure if you were familiar with that, the health and <coughs> part. So great. Yeah, that, that's done. <laughs> um, if you open up your folders, there is an exhibit that looks like this. Um, it shows the benefit summary of um, your current Hampshire County Trust uh, plan. Well, it's your, the renewal plan with the buy down option. So that does include the plan changes. Um, and then I am also showing the Maya quote next to it, which on the HMO, it shows a 10.22% savings. Uh, and then um, on the second page is the, the PPO plan. And that shows a 7.66% uh, decrease to the rates that were proposed by Hampshire Group Trust for July 2018. So this, the plans, uh, Maya can replicate the buy down plan or your current plan. Um, if you decided to stay with your current plan design, um, it would be 5% on top of the rates that we're quoting here. Um, the only difference of the plan is the maximum out of pocket. You'll see in yellow on the sheets that um, Maya has a 2,500, 5,000 max out of pocket for me medical. And for pharmacy, there's a 1,000, 2,000 um, maximum out of pocket. So that differs from the Hampshire Group Trust. So as, I, as I look at these, if I could, Wendy, what I'm hearing is in the in the current Hampshire County, there's no out of pocket for prescriptions. Uh, no, everything goes to the max out of pocket for the medical. So Got that it. would so be it's, for it's one umbrella. It just combined okay. under Got one. It. Okay. But it's a it's a sixty four fifty and twelve thousand nine hundred. Got it. Thank but you. But everything goes to that max out of pocket. Okay. So that just gives you a brief overview of what the plans look like, um, and just the small differences. And this, like I said, does show the um, plan change that Hampshire County Group Trust did propose for July. Is this uh, is this proposal because we're in theory entering a new arrangement? Is this based on the current participation, meaning number of enrolled, but also our our history, or is this a is this kind of a, an entry level history, and then we establish a trend, and then the rates shift around? Um, well, this is your proposal for uh, July 2018. This year, right. Yep. Um, so this would carry you through the year, mm -hmm. uh, through the fiscal year, and then um, in July of 2019. Recess. Yep. yep. You, we would um, uh, go ahead and give the town the um, Maya Trust average. The way that Maya rates is, mm -hmm. um, you know, we go out with our proposal for the first year, right. the second year the new account gets the trust average. Um, this year the trust average is 4.6%. Mm -hmm. And then the third year you start getting rated based on your own experience. Your own experience. And okay. Sunderland's pretty pretty small, so it, it would probably lean more towards the, the trust average unless you're really you know running exceptionally. Then um, you know I do have accounts that are getting a 0% increase this year. Um, this year the range went from 0 to 11.1 because the trust uh, establishes a, a range mm -hmm. and then the average based on how, how the whole trust is running. So if, uh, if an account is running a little little above average, like their claims are a lot more than expected, you know, they would get toward the higher part of that range. Mm -hmm. If they're running better than expected, they get down to the bottom. So nobody, no account that for um, fiscal year 19 will get anything over 11.1 .1, even if they're running at 200%. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, um, so there's some protections in place, so that way it kind of helps remove some of the fear of, of moving to a different trust. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, on the, is, does that answer the questions on the first? Yeah, it's just mine. Okay, great. 
Um, on, on this exhibit, um, uh, with the, the yellow and blue and green on it, <laughs> um, the uh, top section shows what the Hampshire County Group Trust rates would be for, for July based on current membership. Um, it's coming up with an annual premium of $415,351. And then with the Maya quote, um, we're coming in at $373,966. Um, the percentage difference is that Maya is coming in 9.96 um, below um, the Hampshire Trust rates. And uh, the dollar difference is $41,385. Uh, let's see. We had also provided a, a MedX2 quote since you also have a MedX2 plan. Um, ours is, our quote came in at $354.29 and in the Hampshire um, rates for MedX2 for 2018 are $346. So just as a, as a side note. And we also did give a dental quote that um, the rates would come out you know, comparable, maybe slightly lower than the, the Hampshire dental rates. Um, if you flip over to the second page, what this shows is the Hampshire County Group Trust um, rates um, at a 60% contribution from the town and a 55% contribution from the town. So it, it shows what the town's share of that, of that uh, rate would be. Um, so the town share, uh, you can see it in the, on the first page it was 415000 in total of what the premium would be um, if the town contributed 55%, um, the town would pay $228,443. And if the town contributed 60%, it would be $249,211. And then on the next page, on page three, um, is the employee share. So. The remaining would be a 45% contribution from the employee or 40%. Um, so at 45%, the employee share would be $186,908. And at a 40% employee contribution, the employees would be contributing $166,140. And that's an annual number. On uh, page four. Um, this shows the Maya rates at a 60% a contribution to premium and a 55% contribution to premium. Um, if the, the town share at 55% would equate to $205,681, uh, which is a 22%, I mean $22,762 dollar savings to the town of what their portion of the contribution would be at 55 percent and at 60,000 uh, the total um, you know with a snapshot of this membership I understanding it does fluctuate um, is 224,379,000 uh, which would be a savings that might could provide at approximately $24,831. On the last page uh, this is showing the employee contribution um, at 45%. If the employees contributed 45%, uh, the total would be $168,284. Um, the employees could save $18,623. And at 40%, uh, the total amount that the, the employees would pay would be $149,586 based on this membership and they could save $16,554 annually. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chair? Yeah, please. So, uh, Wendy, what's, what's your experience with, um, what's your experience having plans move into Maya? Is it relatively seamless? How, how is it um, not executed? Because you're here selling plans. I assume we know how to do this. The question is, how is it, how does it go with staff? 
Well, um, we use Blue Cross as our, our network. So um, as far as you know, people being concerned if their providers are going to be in network, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing, that there should be, shouldn't be any worry about that at all because okay. it's the same network. Um, the transition is, is pretty seamless. Um, it's just a matter of um, electronic enrollment or paper enrollment um, coming into Maya and uh, we can go ahead and enter it, get ID cards out. Usually we have everything in by May 1st, so that way we can turn around plan documents and um, ID cards to members on time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, with one of the, con not concerns, but something to think about with leaving the Hampshire County Group Trust and coming to Maya is the run out. Right. You know, is that exposure. So usually it's two or three months worth of claims that you would need to fund for just to make sure any claim incurred up to June 30th, you know, is paid for um, either out of, you know, town funds or Maya does have a program where um, they could add um, whatever that estimated amount would be that came from Hampshire County Group Trust. Uh, we could take that dollar amount and spread it over 24 months and we could add that to the, um, you know, the monthly premiums. So that way it can soften the blow in case you don't have um, funds to cover that. How many towns leave any given year in Maya? What's the turnover? I mean, they, can't, they can't all be coming in the front door. Somebody's got to be leaving. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, th yeah. I think Atha was the most, the most recent. recent one. Right. I think that's the only one that left for this year that, that I'm aware of. Great, thank um, you. We do have four new ones coming in. Nice. You know, from the, from the eastern side of the state. Any questions, Scott? Um, I, I, it, for me, mm. working in a company at one time that switched insurance carriers every year, mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I know it was, it was very difficult, right. especially and 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 you know, especially if they had young children. So I mean, so I would, I mean, that'd be the biggest thing is is how. How seamless that change is, the changeover, and if nothing more than getting a different card, a green, you know, you have a green card instead of a blue card, that's that's not that's not difficult. Right, right. Um, yeah, the, the network would would all be the same, so at least they wouldn't have to worry about changing their pediatricians. They wouldn't have to worry about. You have the back, same back end service provider in that respect. And 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 you're gonna have the same services. You're gonna still save the same co, basically the same co pays and everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And and. Close your ears now. I don't want to get this out. <laughs> but if, Scott, if, if we can provide more for our employees for the same price, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's been our—it's always been our goal. We we're just talking about you. I know. <clears throat> it's been—it's been our goal forever. Ten years, anyway. At least ten years. Right. Yeah. So you technically, with with Maya, you can design your plans how you would like. It's not just one plan for the whole trust. Um, each town or each entity can choose their own benefits. Um, so if you wanted to even keep the plan that you have today, um, it would be adding 5% onto the rates that we quoted. Um, and you could keep the same benefits, so you'd have the, the richer benefits, um, you know, with just a, a still under the um, renewal increase that you got from Hampshire. So to, just to clarify, I could, I could share. I just was gonna give a little brief overview why we Right. When looking mm -hmm. in the spring, we were notified by the trust um, that they were going to be implementing some plan changes that would result in more out of pocket costs to employees, as well as um, an average of 4.9 to 4.7 increase in the premium. Um, so at that time, I said, Well, let's look at what else is out there and is similar to what the trust offers the town. And, we know that Maya is a proven um, company and provider of insurance. Um, you don't think they're going to go out of business tomorrow? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> they're pretty huge. Um, and they do have the town's um, liability and um, comp and all other insurance they do provide to the town. Um, so I reached out to them and asked them to come in. Um, and they met with the financial management team, as did the Hampshire Trust, and um, discussed their proposals. And we've been kind of hammering out the numbers. Enrollment kept kind of changing and stuff. So um, we've been going back and forth to make sure that we're looking at apples and apples and not apples and oranges. And so 
Well, one, thing that scared, <laughs> one, one of the things that scares me with the, the Hampshire Trust is that in, in years past, they kept their rates artificially low by, by using, using their reserves. Yeah. Dipping into the reserves. Right. right. And, and now, those, now those reserves are, are going away. You guys don't dip in your reserves, do you? No, I, I believe the last time they did that um, was several years ago when the GIC had opened up, um, so, opened it up to all municipalities can join into the GIC. Yes. Um, and um, they haven't really done that yet. That's not really their philosophy is to, to keep dipping into the reserves. They, they want to make sure that they have enough, you know, for, for anything, so. So as we look at these at, at these two, and I, wanna, I don't want to belabor the point, this isn't uh, the good one-year buy-in number. And the, no. uh, I understand. Yeah, uh, they right? have to ask. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> right. Right on sale today. Yeah, yeah, right. no, Next yeah. year you go. Oh yeah, no! Like what did those, I do? Like those offers from a certain right. broadband provider, right? You know? no. Or my pillow. It goes up, or your pillow. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, so this year, um, you know, the rates would be. Um, what you see here, and mm -hmm. then um, the first renewal, like I said, would, would be the average of the trust. Yep. And the trust has been running really well. Um, so, so say it was say you were already in your second year. This year's increase would be four point six percent, and then you could still make plan design changes or do what you needed to do to get it to whatever your you know, your budget numbers are or for whatever you needed to do for your employees. Um, and then the third year, start taking claims into consideration, um, right. and then you know weight it. Uh, some data. Yeah. yeah versus the trust data so that way you know um, based on how credible it is you know obviously the larger the group the more credible they are and they can rely more on their actual experience but um, Sunderland being of the smaller size um, would probably always lean more toward the um, the trust average. And I think that's the other thing with the trust it's, it, everybody has the same plan you can't can't make plan changes individually each town. Right, they present a plan. Um, it's right. a plan and everybody's in or, or they're You're not. in your, uh, yeah. um, Where we have a little bit of wiggle room if we need to look at costs mm -hmm. or, or whatever. We could make those plan changes What's, up or down, whatever, you know. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> What's total enrollment at Maya? Uh, it's over 70,000 members. Currently. Mm -hmm. That's participants or members? Uh, there's right there on my little sheet. Um, and New members. Year, members. Got it. <laughs> yep, 37,000 subscribers. Yep. And then over 70,000 members. Got it. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And there's some protections in place in case you do have like larger claims. Um, right. No, no, I was, I was, I was, I was yeah. trying for controlling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Thank you. You're listing the plan specifics for the Hampshire Trust there on this front page of this one here for the upcoming year. Yes. Are some of those co-pays higher than they currently are? Yes. yes. And so that in itself is an added burden for the participants. Mm -hmm. Yep. And is right. that, uh, have you quantified that? I'm just saying so you guys know where you're standing as far as what the net change is to the employee. Okay, that's one of the one of the reasons for the for the initiative was just that this seemed to be a trigger this year that there would be a burden for participants in the existing in the existing in our existing coverage and we're looking to uh, see if there were ways to mitigate that so we went shopping or sherry went shopping so my, so my next question is that I sat in a school committee meeting where it explained that one of the increases in the budget was because for the, the central office cost because the employees Teachers at the school comes through the town, I believe. Those Correct. Who choose to get insurance. Yep. But the central office people get it through Hampshire. the frontier plan. It gets with Hampshire Trust, and okay. they're already planning on going. You know, I've got yep. a little, you know, the write up here about how they raise their copays in order to keep the premium uh, increase down. Correct. Because they stop being able to draw on their reserves, but it's still costing them much more money. And so, you know, the obvious question is, have they looked at something like this? Frontier. It's a good uh, question. It, it's it actually it's a good. That's a good question, Richard. I I don't. I can't specific specifically say yes or no. Yeah. Um, I can tell you that when um, we had the option to join the GIC, is about the same time that uh, Frontier, Mohawk, Marhar, 
uh, Pioneer, and they, they had a Franklin um, collaborative of, right. of health insurance. And at that time, we had suggested to, to them that at the that superintendent, we had we had made a suggestion that they look at the Hampshire, because Hampshire had out, at that point was outperforming GIC and anything else that we, we had looked at at that particular time. So I don't know if they had looked at it, but I'm sure we're going to talk to them and let them know what's happening right now. I mean, is it, is, is it like at this point, water over the dam for 2019 that they've made commitments and nothing I, can be done? Or? There, there, there's a notification component to the Hampshire Trust. And as Wendy was saying, there's a, there's a I don't want to call it, there's a window there where it's important that if you back out of the Hampshire Trust and you're moving into this enrollment period, that 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 window is covered. That's your it's not buyout. What's the term again? Run out. Run out, run out period. And it's important the town has contributed very early on into that run out. And we didn't have the same kind of participation that we do now. So our as I recall, and our run out numbers from the Hampshire Trust are pretty lean compared to our current enrollment. So it could be a liability, and we may have to work that out with respect to Maya. I also want to, if I could, put in you know the shameless plug for the Hampshire Trust, and the Hampshire Trust, and I'm not on the board or any of that stuff. They're they're in a position that Maya was in when the GIC went around, and that is they had to, you had to dig into some reserves to keep your premiums where they were, while that enrollment. So the question is about the, a pool flight, right? So. Hampshire Trust is in the similar position where they had pool flight and the question was, well, how do we keep our premiums low because we're losing them to competition and we have higher we have higher payouts. So it's, it's almost analogous in many ways to what the situation you were in with the GIC. They absorbed the Franklin piece. They're very particular in, a, in our meeting and financial uh, working group. They're very particular about who they actually bring in. And just like your risk is too high, we're not doing it. So well, anyway, anyway, they've done us well for a number of years, but it doesn't negate the fact that we have to go shopping every now and then. But you're not aware of the fact of, as to whether Frontier has actually gotten Not Not aware. That's something we can certainly send over to, the, the, to Patty, in the, Patty in the morning. Yeah. Say, hey, did you actually go shopping? And she'd be like, it's budget season. What are you, out of your mind? So. <laughs> but, I mean, these are... Yeah, yeah. sizable numbers here, right? Right. And, for, first, and you know, and, and and furthermore, the other problem we got at Frontier is they've got some sort of, a, you know, there's something legal I can't understand. I don't understand enough to explain it, but right. they have to give back some part of a premium savings because the they have yeah. raised right. the copay. Right. right. So right. it's like. You don't hit, you don't hurt me on this side. Yeah, I mean, it is. yeah, right. Yeah, there is there, there is something that's built into the contract, and it's it's pretty it's not uncommon actually if there's savings that it's shared. Yeah, it's twenty five. But right. you know, you look at the you look at the changes on these couple of pieces of paper, yeah. and they're not trivial. Correct. I, I can offer my copy of it if you want to send it over to Patty. And, and my other quick question is, at some point in the change from let's say fifty percent town share is where we were a bit ago. Yep. Up towards well, you know, the max number is hundred percent. Sure. Okay. At some point in there or some points in there we change behavior. Correct. Okay. He raised so a good whether point. people take the plan or not, or right. what level they yep. take the plans. Yeah. Yep. And so on. And so I was wondering if this is a very modest increase at a low level. Right. Okay. But at some point these increases become enough that you end up getting now the family plan okay. goes to the spouse that works for Sunderland right. Right. rather than the spouse that sure. works someplace else. Yep. And in your experience, is is uh, at this level that the town is paying for? Uh, is there any uh, any history of that being uh, at all significant? For me. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? You know, um, well, yeah, it's definitely the, the richer you make the plan and the higher you make the contribution, the more it incents people to come to your plan instead of the employee spouse's plan. Right. I mean, you know, in a way, you sort of say, you know, you really don't want to be the best plan around. Right, right. Because then you cover every darn family. You want to be this, right. This is where right. We're yeah. ways away from that. I think, that's I think we're not getting to that area, but that's a great no. question. You, you raise a good you raise the, a good. Just, just, Deerfield is uh, 65%, I believe. Right. Um, Waitley, I think, is like eighty-five percent. There's, but we're we're the other. I know. I'm pretty sure Deerfield sixty-five. 
I think weight lead is either 75, 85, and the same with Kamala. Right, even when we were in the personnel committee, when we were looking at maybe yeah. looking to bump it up by 5%, we knew that even going up 5%, we were still not gonna be anywhere near coming near that. If, if I could if I could roll in there, Peter, the tre a, a treasurer collector has, has said that there you can always you can always pick up a couple of plans anytime there's a richer benefit. And and this kind of you wouldn't see a whole you wouldn't see a bum's rush with this percentage. But you're right, there is a tipping point. It's mm -hmm. like so okay, we get to that point and here we come. And just my my opinion is that most of our aides that work at Sunland Elementary, yep. the aides that work at uh, Frontier, they're working for benefits. Right. They, they, and, 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 and that's, that's the bottom point. that's the bottom line. And and you're talking about some of the people that that have some of the hardest my opinion, the aides have some of the the hardest nuts and bolts work that have to be done. They, they do all the, a lot of the dirty work. And, and not all of them, but many of them are just working for benefits right now. And that's what, that's what, we, that's what we've seen before. Um, so that, that's what, those are people you really are, are helping. You're, you're helping people at the lower, the lower end of our pay scales, I think. If I could, just what Sherry hits this one sheet here with respect to the changes in the Hampshire uh, plan, Hampshire Trust's plan this year, and some of them seem like they're, you know, they're, they're pretty big jumps. If you're if you if you need if you need to get to the emergency room, you go from zero to five hundred dollars out of your pocket. And those those are real numbers when you're work, when you're working for twelve or fourteen dollars an hour. Absolutely. So anyway, so what's our notification? Um, if if we need if we chose to go this route and this isn't this is a so don't expect any decisions tonight <laughs> right let me just qualify that and I think it's really really important what is uh, this timetable and our actions so we have to notify the trust ninety days so we have to notify them by the end of the month mm -hmm. March thirtieth for June thirtieth for the Got new it. fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And that is there. A, is, are there steps with respect to my uh, if if this comes to fruition? Say we exit the Hampshire Trust, and we call up Wendy and go, "Okay, Wendy, it's time for a new car. You sell you, you signed Sunderland this year, <laughs> right? What happens then?" Uh, well, we uh, finalize the rate, you know, yep. just depending on, you know, if you wanted us to include the run out or yep. not. Yep. Um, then we would just go ahead and set up open enrollment, you know, sign off on the, all the documentation. Yep, yep, yep. And set up open enrollment meetings, um, preferably in April. Um, so that way we can get the information over to um, to Maya to get mm -hmm. entered and so they can ship it over to, to Blue Cross mm -hmm. to get all that set up. And the goal here would have it, Sherry, and help me out. This the goal would be fiscal year nineteen. It flips. July first. Yeah. Got it. Great. Yeah, sounds good. Maybe we'll work together. Yeah. yeah. Sounds great to me. I'm sure, appreciate, <laughs> sure appreciate your work. Yeah. I really do. Thank you. Well, my uh, card is in there, so if anybody does have any questions, feel free to. Reach out, I'm happy to, to help. And as, as, as a matter of course, just to all honesty, uh, Wendy was not the one driving the BMW four-door. It was, it, was, it, was, it, it was her boss. Uh, <laughs> no, no, he, he doesn't drive. He is a driver. <laughs> you, can tell, you can tell him Scott said that. I will. I will. I will refresh his memory. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you, Wendy. <laughs> All right. Some food for thought. So Scott, you can almost go to sixty percent inside of this move, correct? And 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 not increase our uh, correct cost. Correct. With the <coughs> same with the same plan. Yep. With the same plan. Yeah. Correct. Out of pocket. Right. And reduce the out of pocket. Right. I mean, it's important to bear in mind the ex <coughs> expenses that are the changes at the Hampshire Trust. Are, are going to hit a participant in the retail fashion. It may not necessarily be on the uh, premium, but it's it's the death of the thousand visits where you right. go and it's 
40 instead of 20 for a wellness check or prescriptions now cost a thousand dollars a year as opposed to they used to not be in there they're rolled into the general one so or something happens sure. at night you have to go to the emergency room and well that ends up being that ends up being real money and, and sadly that's part of the insurance shell game and 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 I'm, I'm sorry to put it that way but that's just the way it is the cost are the cost of the cost mm -hmm. and so you push it down and you say hey our premiums only went up four percent well that's good but I just spent ten grand yeah hey, we've been with the Hampshire group for for a number of years now and and, I, and, and, and again I'll tell you I, I've, I've lived through it. I, I mean, right. we, we're, you know, we're Health New England one year, then we're a different PPO the next year, then we're, you know. In, in your prior employer. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, every, and, and, and for a long time, it was, and, and a long, for a long time, and then they were, they always um, looked at, you know, your out of pocket, you know, it says, oh, well, we can keep the rates to say, yeah, but your $5 copay is now $25. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on with respect to the plan right. this year. Right. And, and, and it matters at the same point, And, and I, I just talked with what Peter was saying earlier. I also respect, you know, our, our, we, we tried to stay, we tried to keep, keep the plan, um, stable. Correct. That's a good point, actually. And the Hampshire Trust has done a good job of keeping it stable for a long time. For a long time, right? But, but, but right now they're they're, they're having a hard time, right? Doing that. Um, and 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 I don't think I don't know. Sometimes I wonder: Are, are you better off going out and looking every year, mm. um, and trying to and. and because if you do things like a business, I mean, right. businesses right. go, uh, right. not not all businesses, but every business is always going out every year. Yep. Yep. Um, but at the same time, you know, you, you do put through your, your employees through through help right. sometime. You know, or if you have a, a condition and, and you have a familiar with a doctor, and also, oh, you can't use that doctor any longer, right. you know. Or they're out of the network or whatever. They're, yeah, network. or they were in network and no longer. Right. Yep. And I just look at the GI, GIS. GIC, GIC. Yeah. they they tried to change. They were going to throw. The board tried to change it, mm -hmm. and and right. a lot of, it was a lot of pushback. <laughs> yeah, and look, and look, yeah. but because people are are get used to a a, a plan and mm -hmm. a certain you know provider. So. Yeah. And I don't think people you know again like you know playing with someone's health. You know people have to feel feel comfortable with their their health provider. Correct, right. and that's a that's a, a point where what people's lives where they want some stability, because there's enough instability as it is. Well, this this I, I want to <clears throat> go out and uh, you know publicly thank Sherry. She brought this up. Oh, I don't know, early November, mm -hmm. when the first part of the uh, Hampshire Trust was rumored to have changes coming on board, and uh, we have had. She has certainly been on the phone and, and met with, and the financial team did meet with reps from both. Hampshire Trust and Maya, and that's important to bear in mind. The Hampshire Trust is at the table just as much as Maya was. And we did ask Maya to go back and ensure that they didn't bring us uh, anything that was, w that they came back with an exact match. We want to know exactly what yeah. we're apples getting. To apples right. comparison. Don't, don't send us something that is completely different. Give us something that's the exact match. And they're coming in with some some real potential uh, yeah. savings for both employees out of pocket as well as right. the town. Even when you look at the brutal cynical, it's it's even if if we increase it, it's still right. six percent less. Right. And that's it's real money. Yeah. Yeah. It all adds up. Yeah. It's real money. Good point. All money's real money. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, no, not Bitcoin. Appreciate it. Sorry. Yeah. What's that? Not Bitcoin. No, uh, no, no, it's yeah. not real money. I don't consider that money, I guess. So, you know, in the, in the traditional sense. But, yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, so we have we have a little mm -hmm. homework. It sounds like mm -hmm. here, if I could, Mr. Chair, yeah. and if we need to notify by the end of the month. Yeah. We need to make a decision. It's the twelfth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Seventeen. So any, anything else? That, any, <coughs> anything else that we'll need? Should we? Mm -hmm. Get the rest of your compatriots at our next meeting and see yeah. if we can at least hash this one out. Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's all, Mr. Chair. Yeah. All right. You want to have an omnibus budget discussion and do minutes last? 
Yeah, I think fine. it's I think it's important that this, if I could, I think it's important that we we begin the honest warning of the public of a three hundred plus thousand dollar three hundred nineteen thousand dollar red number at the bottom of our revenue chart, and what the drivers of that piece are. And we know the drivers are, in this case here, we're looking to actually save some insurance. There are some school drivers. There are some other insurance drivers. And then there's the fact that we have relatively static growth in our in our revenue stream. We just do. And so if, if we don't have the honest discussion about what, if we have an override, how it's funded, how it's structured, then we're going to run up against the clock and the number is not going to get any better. Yep. And I would also say last year we asked for a $300,000 override knowing that we had we had prior word from two school committees that the coming year, that being the year we're currently in, we're going to be equally difficult. And I want to give Andy credit in the back who looked back not at Frontier's numbers over a two-year period, not just year on year on year, because we lose sight of it year on year on year on year. And the recorder had last year and this year combined, it's, 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 it's gets to be $634,000, $635,000. Yep. That's just real money. And again, I know it's not Bitcoin. I wish it was. But uh, those expenses are hard for a community, even if even at our participation level of 27, 28% of the Frontier's budget. And the second year of, and rightly so, uh, requests from the elementary school based on some of the program work that's going on, but also the fact that we have some organic, <coughs> organic growth in our school. Not choice in, not choice out. Organic, organic growth. growth in the school. And mm -hmm. that's not such a bad thing. Those are actually, and the term has been used before, those are, are actually our kids. Yes, and, and when you look at that, we're actually trying to get more people in because when we look at it as a you know, step back and look at the county and the region, we're losing people. And that's actually right. becoming a problem. Right, right. And the, the notion that, well, we don't go down the, we had the discussion with the school, uh, the administration about choice and charter and all that. I don't want to go there right now yeah. personally, only in that, you know, we have to find a way to pay for or reduce. Uh, it's important to bear in mind, having been through 2009, 8 and 9, that if you simply uh, pigeonhole education as a separate part of the community, it's, it's, not, it's not good. You know, we don't pad expense requests, and we certainly don't pad our revenue stream. We know what it is. We can pretty much predict it. We've been at it a little while now. So as we talk about $300,000, uh, the prerogative of the board and the notification of the clerk that there may be uh, override questions coming up, I think we have to have that is continue that as a, an open and honest warning to the community. And here we are at another, well, not so much today, but other budget hearings, and the room's been substantively empty. And you look at the number that we discussed last year, it sounds awfully familiar to what awfully we're familiar. this year. I awfully think, familiar. Doesn't it? So as of right now, 319.9. That's with, without some of the discussion tonight. And that's with, uh, I'm sure you have this plugged in with 2% increase. 2%. Okay. So Richard, as we talk about the personnel piece, we may well be able to take a bite at two of the three prongs of the proposal. Well, it's, we it's, it's still a goal. I think we can. Yep. If we can say with a straight face to the town that we're saving money and expanding a benefit, I don't see how anybody would walk away from that. Right. Right. That's exactly. That's just huge. So again, I think if we could, for our next meeting, have what the drivers are, and we know education in total is up $249,000, round number. That's for Bruce. Bruce Gordon. Total insurance, this is at the, prior to our discussion tonight, prior to the Maya, the, with our mm -hmm. current enrollment, $102,000. And that's not exclusive to medical, on the contrary. So there's, there's 300 and change. We have <coughs> our SCEMS <clears throat> up $36,000. We have library increase of $16,000. 
and you're pretty quick at 300,000. It doesn't take much to get to 300,000. And again, that's based on our, our revenue stream of current request is about 8.1 million and our total revenue is a forecast that's using the free cash guidelines, that's applying a percentage of free cash, as well as our capital stabilization override, so, which, Mr. Yep. Mr. Berger, yep. Scott, the, li the library that, so you, you got, all right, so Richard, so here, the library has an 8.1% increase for the director, 17.6% uh, wages increased for the support staff. Where did you, did you guys, did you guys, we're talking a two or three percent cola for everybody, including mm. the library. Yes. Yeah. And not those numbers. But okay. Right. Same number for everybody. Right. Same numbers for everybody. Yes. Budget reflects their requested amount. So those are, those aren't in there yet. Right. Right. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. We, yeah. And Tom, that's a really good point. As we go about, and we've done this kind of tetrising before between expenses and, and revenue stream, you've got to make it fit inside the space. Mm -hmm. And it may be that some requests are, are reduced. That's unfortunate, but that's also oftentimes the way it is. Again, the request, the request is different than oftentimes the recommendations or the, abil the ability to pay. We've seen that before. Correct. I, I was just, I was just, I just guess I was just getting right. clarification. No, no, you raise a great point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. On the plus side, people who have been following the budget process for a number of years, we are, we are at or we're near the end of our debt cycle with respect to both the library and the public safety complex, which we paid off in two budgets, two more budgets. And those are debt excluded and they come right off the rate. If I, could, if I could bring to people's attention that, Richard, I remember when we were finance committee and we were talking about having a debt service that was in the mid-teens percent of our operating budget. In 2009, we had a debt and interest schedule of $629,000. And in, 2000, in 2019, our debt schedule is 250700 And we're almost done with it. Thanks. Now, debt is a tool, as we talk about fire truck, Capital planning, long term, you know, that it has, it has a plus, but it, well, it's, it's nothing like the 17, 18, 19 percent we had of our operating budget 10 plus years ago. That was a big chunk. There was a lot going on in a short window, and it's, it's important to remind the taxpayer and thank them for that, that capital work mm -hmm. and let them know that it does come off the rate. It really, really does come off the rate at the end. Yo, Scott, this all shows of the tax rate. Absolutely right. We realize it. It's a fifteen dollar rate. Yep. How would that get here when there's no business? Right. It's a great point. Hard to explain. Yep. Right. That's a decade's worth of work of a lot of people. Yes. When you look around, you see vastly different rates in other communities. Well, we were looking at, but we worked with the prior treasurer collector about, and to his credit, and uh, finance committee at the time. But how do we go about that refinancing bit? You know, and shorten the term up and take the take the lump payout. All those, all that stuff's lost in the noise when you start looking at the spreadsheet once a year. And I think that that history is awfully important to bear in mind uh, for the taxpayer to recognize that you know completely yeah. cognitive of what that rate is and what those impacts are. Thank you. I suppose people don't know in town that our rate in Franklin County is one of the top. Yeah. And being the lowest. Right. It's it's right. it's the top of the bottom. Yes. <laughs> right. Those two little yeah. places there that get free taxes. Yes, yeah. right. And then there's Shelburne. Right. Yeah. Here is a great point. <laughs> then there's Sunderland. Sunderland, right. right. Interesting. And the ones that are really low, Irving and Rose, because pump storage yeah, station. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Or, or, yeah, the decommissioned low, low nuclear region. plant. Yeah. Or a really big, yeah. a really big green space. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad there isn't a little space for recognizing the fact that we do have a tax rate and a tax format here that is pretty attractive. Mm. And uh, wouldn't hurt, I think. Right. If, 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 Roll off of that a little bit, so yep. in some way help that budget. Right, right. People recognizing that they got a pretty good deal here. Right. 
That's a great point. Mm-hmm. We had we had an individual that lived in town that school choice their, who no longer lives in town school choice their child to Leverett. I remember a person coming in and said, "Look at my my child has gets crayons and paper and glue and whatever, right? And on and on and and that's why I'm school choice of my child." And you say, "Well." Yeah, but Leverett at the time was nineteen, mm. almost twenty dollars a thousand, right. and Sunderland was twelve, thirteen, fourteen dollars a thousand, and there's a difference. I mean that that really, and, and when you look yeah, at exactly. not only the, the the rate, but when you actually look at the the amount of money that's being charged on the tax bill. So I, I think we we've, we've tried to do a good job. Um, and from the data, it looks like it is a good job. Now, now, is there some way we can get value from that fact? Right, right. And get some help in making the done numbers work. Well, I, I raise the point, Richard, uh, in this in this setting and in this context, to tie together the notion that if we indeed are going to go to the town for. Three hundred thousand dollars, and I'm making a number up, picking a number. Three hundred thousand dollars override will have an impact of blank, and in thirty months, you're going to drop that much again. And I think that's important timing to keep out there. And we'll have we'll we'll put those numbers together as to what they actually are. You're going to drop off the debt exclusion in a very short period of time. It's not a ten-year window or an eighteen-year window anymore. We know exactly what the bond is. It's. 24 months or 30 months from now is done and, and it will have this impact on the rate so let's talk about the rate in an honest fashion the rate itself can still fund the operating request that we have in front of us now and we've had finance committee members we've had committee members who've had residents who have said geez you know every whatever 10 years you have to have a reset because you just can't we, we I believe this board at this community and the people who work uh, in the community or for the community are cognitive of expense requests. They kind of get it. We send the letter out. Here's a personnel. You know, here's the selectman's uh, guidance for your budget. And you know, we've had some growth in the last number of years, and that growth in the last number of years uh, has put us uh, now the current request. The current budget cycle that we're in right now, $7.6 million right now, if FY18 is only f- less than, it's basically $500,000 of total expense growth since 2009. So you go from 6.9 to 7.6 in 10 years. I, you know, we do a pretty good job Keep keeping those costs down and being the ogres. <laughs> that said, we also recognize the community has requests, and the, some of those requests are reflected in in their in the operating budget requests. Yeah. I got a couple of concerns. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I could just mention, um, one is in line with what you've just been talking about, which was the part of the reason I came tonight was that. Um, hoping to get some guidance or whatever you want, information, whatever, about what the town's overall system looks like, because in the school committee, we obviously have our own budget, which is a major part of it. And so, you know, one of the questions in my mind, in terms of how I, just as an individual member of the school committee, approach the school committee budget, is to, do you say, you know, you could argue, well, that's going to be an override, so we ought to let them ask, you know, put the, put the whole request out there. Or you say, well, yeah, but I look at a few of these things and I think, you know, we need this bit here and this bit here and so on. And maybe you could knock, and I'm not saying anyone would agree with me. I'm right. just saying this is my own opinion. Yep. <clears throat> um, and you could knock something off and, you know, if you, you know, if there wasn't going to be an override or if an override was known was going to fail, well, you want to be doing that stuff anyway. If the override is going to go out there and you're going to try and pass it, you know, do you just go for what they're asking for or not? And um, I was hoping for some sense as to, you know, what your thoughts might be on that question. And then my second one 
uh, is going to be a much more specific area, mm -hmm. and that is deals with actually part of the reason I was interested in getting on the committee, which is how do we take care of the building? Mm -hmm. yep. How do we go? And I was going to say, how do we do a better job of yep. taking care of the building? But better job means you're actually already doing something. Right. Okay. And, you know, yeah, okay, we've got custodians, we're keeping it clean, and we're, you know, that sort of stuff. But um, I came by here uh, and dropped off with Sherry, and it's been the better part of a month now, a list that had a number, you know, a list of so-called capital, depends how you define capital, yep. the things that the building needed, and they ran yep. a little bit over, you know, there were probably some 20 to 30 items on there, I can't remember exactly, okay, and I don't know if she shared that with you guys or not, and um, I got, I, I, I've been interested in that because ever since I was on the finance committee because the problem with any institution and schools in particular is that maintenance is the first thing to get cut during the year when money runs short, okay, you defer the maintenance, and it's not unique to Sunderland or it's not unique to the Frontier District. Yeah. Uh, it's it's unique to every single educational institution around here because, you know, and, and, and furthermore, the people running the operation are educators. They're not building people. Right. Okay. Right. And so I did a couple of things. First, I looked back in the history, and it turns out that December 15 months ago, uh, Mr. Lesko, who's a facilities person there, had come to the committee with that same list of projects yep. with no numbers on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And he said, basically, when you get serious about doing something, I'll wait, you know, I'll spend the time putting some numbers on it. Okay? But, you know, a year went by, there was nothing done. And then I said, uh, also, there's this capital planning committee in the town, and they passed a capital override. And as far as I know, the school is the biggest building in town. It's the most expensive building in town. Most used. And it's probably got the most traumatic history in town. <laughs> I <can't. Okay? laughs> And what do we got to do to try and take care of this True. place? Okay, and you got to do, how do you set up the process, mm -hmm. okay, so that you almost do it by default, right. okay, because the current system isn't working. Great point. The current system is, you put money in the school budget, okay, and then you expect this to happen. Well, if you want to know where that leads you, what's happening to Frontier, yep. okay, yep. it leads to some big bond issue and probably a bunch of repairs that cost more than they would have if you'd done them when you should have done them. I don't know the situation over there, but that's my gut feeling. Sure. The gist of the situation. Can I answer to both, yeah, Peter? If right. I could. So, so let me just yeah. a couple more things. Yeah. Um, and then I showed them the spending that was presented, approved at town meeting, from the capital planning committee. So I, I, I dug up the last couple of years, yep. and it says, "You see any school projects on here?" I says, "I don't think that thing was passed." For capital projects excluding the schools. Correct. That's correct. Okay. But you are not making it you aren't even making an effort. Yeah. Right? You're not, you know, if you turn stuff, you know, maybe you submit something, nobody goes and shows up and argues for it, and makes the case, and you know, and so on, and meanwhile, things are gonna to continue to get worse. Mm -hmm. So sort of my question to you is and I'm going to come. I don't. I hope we're going to have the capital planning committee tomorrow evening. It actually, it's canceled. It's got. It's been canceled to the twenty seventh. To the twenty seventh. Oh, that even puts it off longer, you know, because I'm hoping to, you know, I, I mean, I really think that there needs to be a serious, um, serious discussion among the whole town. Yep. Okay, because I said to the people at school, I said, I says, this, who owns this building? Right. Town does. Town owns the building. Yep. Okay. And I says, I know the central office is, they're the bitches of educating. Okay, and just look at it. We're not taking care of it. Sure. Okay, and, and, I, and I walked around, I got a tour of the building from Principal Ben, mm -hmm. okay, and, you know, I mean, there are various bigger problems, but he was also saying, God, he says, I'd just love to have a handyman here would come in and fix a bunch of stuff. Right, right. Okay, yeah. and, and, you know, <laughs> I don't, you know, I mean, there are various possibilities. I don't know, you know, one of the things I said about, about the budget, I would, you know, my own idea at this point is, you know, show up at our next meeting and suggest things to be cut and, and, you know, and put in fact, cut out some things and put in a much bigger number for building maintenance sure. as part of the budget and then get some sort of commitment on the part of administration that it can't be spent for anything else. Right. I don't know if that'll, I mean, you know, just me, I don't know if that'd be flat, but I think we got to think about mm -hmm. how we deal with this because it's the problem of the whole town. It's right. not a problem you just say, well, the school should take care of it, right. okay, and then we're not going to worry about it until, you know, 
then something bad happens and right. all that stuff. because among <clears throat> other things you know there aren't it's very rare there'd be a separate article mm -hmm. for capital kind of, I mean it can, occasionally happens with Frontier yep Okay, for this thing, yeah, it has happened, but it's not sort of a regular thing like it is with the police department or, mm -hmm. you know, the various replacement of vehicles or the replacement point, of actually. systems that the other towns own. Yep. Okay, it just doesn't come up because the school, you know, I don't, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not looking for why it happens. Right. I'm just saying, just want to address what's the, the situation right. and what do we do about it? How do we fix it? Yep. And I've got them, meaning the other folks on the committee, mm -hmm. agreed that it's not in the school committee's interest to be possessive about this, yep. okay? I mean, in school, you're supposed to learn how to share, Yep. okay? <laughs> I, just, I want you guys to learn, we gotta share this yep. with the rest of the town because Great. it's the whole town's problem. Great point. Okay, so, I don't have, you know, I mean, there's one thing that you could tell me maybe about the frontier situation. Yep. I know yep. that there's a program through the, the Mass SBA, mm -hmm. okay, for significant repairs. Correct. Okay, that they will uh, fund, you know, something like, two, I'm just throwing a number two, yeah, three, two three, three. Or, or something in that ballpark, okay, if you go through their process. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there was a cutoff for the, it's an annual cycle, and the cutoff for submissions for this annual cycle was last month. Okay. Obviously not going to make that, but one would, I would certainly think that by next February, we would clearly want to have our act very seriously together mm -hmm. in terms mm -hmm. of what we want to do. And that's going to need some help from you guys. Yep. So, so, what has been the school committee's charge to the administration on that point? On which it, point? Well, we Land. have. There, there's a, uh, and it's been more than a few years ago that we we put in a, a, a facilities director. Yep. Right. right. That right. was supposed to be doing just what you said. But it was interesting because I, I was at a CPC, CPC, right? Yeah, CPC. I was at a CPC meeting the other day, and, and we had a conversation with the principal just just on that about the importance of bringing in. So we're working, I think we're working parallel on this one, Peter. Yep. We're, we're, we're saying when, when you need something like they're talking about um, a preschool playground, mm -hmm. and I says, well, that's the first any of us here on this committee has heard about a, a preschool playground. And I and I brought out our capital plan that we have on the town. I says, well, our police department, our fire department, they're all produ you know right. producing every year uh, items that you know and, and telling us that it you know in five years we know we're going to have to we need to buy new guns for mm -hmm. whatever, but we we never have received that from. The, the school so that that's so I'm not blaming you no 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 I know oh, no but I'm, I'm just trying the to system. The point. Right. I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to have the point of, at this point of a, of, a, of a school committee member and embarrassed sure. for the school for not pursuing this stuff right, right. well but but, I, but I'm just wondering like we we've, we've done a lot of um, Green community stuff right. with uh, there. They're going to be there on Wednesday, as a matter of fact. And, and, and so we've done like renovations for lights and and. And, and you were telling me about system. somebody coming, you know, and I asked, you know, somebody about. I can't remember who I asked about. I think I asked the principal about that. One aware. Well, let's go. Like, I so, know Scott wants to answer a couple of your questions. Okay. If, if I could, with yeah. respect to the buildings, Peter, uh, town meeting last year appropriated for. Um, uh, an architecture review right. of, of the assets, and it includes the elementary school. Um, Sherry told me this. Yep. I didn't know the detail. Yep. She told me yep. this. And they're coming, f the, the scope of that service is they're bringing uh, architectural team, mechanical team, electrical team, doing building envelopes, heating electrical systems, lighting energy efficiency, those kinds of things, as a snapshot of today, right. right? And then a five, 10, 20 year capital plan. You can expect this in year five, this by year 10, this by year 20. That helps us with a global planning tool. That's for all the town uh, uh, buildings. With respect to, and this, this, this is analogous, with respect to uh, Frontier and that working group's uh, progress, there's a lot of discussion about what constitutes major maintenance versus what constitutes mm -hmm. capital. Yeah. And how, how do you break the cycle of the backlog, which seems like maintenance, 
that extends the life of the asset without having to go about debt service. And this is where I'm going to give a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, plug for the administration's budget for the elementary school this year. And it, as part of that, it caught my ear when uh, the a, a business manager suggested that they take money out of maintenance and put well, it in, that, in, into the testing piece so the money that we do appropriate for maintenance can actually be used in the building. And I was like, yay, right. good it job. Actually, assuming it actually gets spent well, that That's way. the key. Right. So one more, one more piece about when voting the capital budget, and it's important to bear in mind, this is another kind of side door to getting the money to the right request. Right. A capital appropriation out of the capital budget can go to that capital piece. That's it. It doesn't go to pencils and paper. Right. And I, I use pencils and paper. So I think your timing is impeccable. The, the area, of, uh, area of concern, I think, has been growing for some time across all the town assets. I think there's, I, I think, I feel that we're at the beginning of a culture shift with respect to deferred maintenance and how costly it can actually be. And I'll give you an example. Part of the master list of the frontier piece with a global borrowing, if you looked at the list of things, are three and five thousand dollar items. My God, why aren't we replacing? And I'm using, I'm picking an example up. If you have to spend five thousand dollars on stair treads, replace the stair treads. Spend five thousand dollars. You don't have to borrow three point two million dollars to do it. That said, it's part of the trap you were just describing. If it's in the omnibus budget. It, it, it's, it's chewed up some other way, as we see in, in the, our town's omnibus budget. So I circle back to that timing, what you're bringing the point up, and I, I truly feel that there is a bit of a culture change around it, whether it's Bob Lesko, whether it's the amount of people who are talking about it, uh, and maybe the fact that we have, may have well a program around it. Frontier's in the process of adopting, or is being recommended to adopt the Capital Stabilization Fund just for this reason. So they put money in it, it goes to stair treads and windows and HVAC units and that kind of stuff. So your timing's great. But, but um, if Frontier, I had heard that Frontier did not want to do this program through the SBA. Is that incorrect? Yeah, there's, there was actual question about whether the... And they were going to lose control over the process. They didn't like the fact that somehow it would seem to be run from the other part of the state. I don't know. Well, actually, some, some of the things on the big master list wouldn't qualify. The SBA would look at that. Uh, my, 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 both our experience with the SBA here in town, uh, as well as what we heard from uh, Joe Markanian, who was at our last meeting at Frontier, who was a former uh, DOR guy, said, you, th this list wouldn't pass muster. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't get reimbursed for most of this. But is there a case where you could say, you could figure out, okay, what part of the list will yep. pass muster? Absolutely. Right. Yep. And then go yep. for that. Yep. I mean, not, not yep. just blow off the whole thing because 25% no, no. would right. qualify or something. No. You, ra you, raise right. a, you raise a great point. And again, I'll use, I'll use the, the Frontier example because it's the most fresh. One of the elements out there is rebuilding of, of the, the, the track and field. Mm -hmm. That's like $700,000. That's perfectly legit to go out and, and borrow. You get a long life cycle. It's a one-time project. You want to make sure it's vetted well. A little bit of debt makes perfect sense. Go for it. Bundle some other things in there that actually make sense. Have a big long life cycle, and they're integral to the building. You know, if you want to redo the roof, great, perfect, go for it. You know, but that isn't replacing a stair tread. It, it, there's and, and those the, there's dichotomy in that list. So again, I go back to that culture piece with all the dialogue around it. You're seeing the administration move money to maintenance, and I think in some case. And I'll, I'll push back to the, the school committees themselves. Did the maintenance get done should be the first question in September, right? Yeah. When your first meeting is, okay, how do we do this summer? What got done on that list? And then there's, an, uh, there's a real case. If it got done, perfect. Right. Good job. If it didn't get done, why the hell not? We fought for that maintenance budget. What's going on? Well, it went to snowblowers, and I'm making it up, you know. But again, that's that's not cool. So anyway, that's my long-winded piece. We expect a report from our architect uh, June 1st, and that's to the Capital Planning Committee, and we'll roll that forward to the board and see how that ties together with um, all of our assets. And the elementary school is, as you said, the, has the most contact hours, is the biggest, and frankly, it's been, you know, we're coming to the... 12-year mark now of it being rebuilt. Right. 
Cool. So it's it's you know you got to make right you got to make yeah. sure to keep it up. I, I was walking by not long ago and I saw some sill rot because a piece of siding had been yep. falling away and you can see the rot. And I think you talk about like a culture shift, like summing up on a sound bite. We're kind of seeing the results of being penny wise and pound foolish. Mm -hmm. But see, I, I would even sense. I would even take issue with your very last statement, which you probably said without thinking about it. You said. I mean, you've got to make sure we keep it up. Keep oh, collectively. Up. Yeah, no, no. I mean, we need to make sure right. that we right. keep it up. And I completely agree. I didn't mean it to sound like I was pushing off on, on no, the school it's, committee. It's still, it's a... It was you, you the community. Yeah. I, I think there's a bit of culture of, like, the school takes care of the school. Right. Good point. Thing, which works for all the education stuff. Yep. Okay, but it hasn't Right, but not the structural issues. Taking care of the building. And which, in the clearest case, is what happened when the roof fell in. Right. And your guys' involvement... Right. Okay, which was huge. Okay, with getting the whole thing rebuilt. Okay, it was like, yeah, we got to step in here. Right. Because that's you know, and so on. Well, I'm just saying this is the case where you can't just say, ah, the school will take care of it. Right. Because the track record isn't very good. Sure. And and uh, just to just to maybe even belabor the point a little bit, you we we should we shouldn't let things go to the point where you have to borrow for them. Right. That's. It's you know if you have to borrow because of size and scale that's one thing. If it's, it's the fact that we're not funding the maintenance budget, well you know what we we as as the people who are supposed to supposed to advocate for all of the spending, you know we've got to have that as a priority. And I think we have, I believe we have in the last half a dozen years in particular through the capital planning uh, and some execution, we've had a couple of good capital budgets. Not all been dump trucks, right. and I think that's a good thing. That's part of a good culture shift. Now, um, is there, you know, like I said, I showed them the list of, of, of stuff that was done through the capital mm -hmm. budget, the various items yep. there uh, that over the last couple of years have not included anything for the school. Yep. Is there, and I said, well, we ought to at least try a little harder. Right. And I'm assuming that's the process and that's what we ought to right. do is show yep. up and make the case. Yep. Bring, bring the list and you know right. we'll put it together and it's it's a good working group actually you've got you know members of the planning com planning committee you've got members of uh, uh, the board of selectmen you got member of the finance committee sherry of course you know it's a good uh, two ad two ad hocs who have who are in the business you know and they get it so well, I, I plan like I said I plan on coming with another member tomorrow night yep. plus with Mr. Lesko yep okay so I'll just schedule like twenty seven you know? yeah. We're looking at the 27th. Right. We try to we try to keep it in concert with the planning board meeting because members of the planning board it ties together. They can be with us at six and then be at their meeting at seven. So and we're trying to be in particular in these times at this time of the year. We're trying to be cognizant of the meeting load that everybody has. And, and, and back to my first general mm -hmm. question: Are you at this point pretty close, hundred percent sure there's going to be an override? I don't see how you can fund this budget without it. The question is, will it pass? I understand, but it's, right. that's good. I mean, I'm going to ask you a message <clears throat> yeah. includes yep. an attempted at an override. I'm going to advocate for one. The scale is to be determined, but I'm going to advocate for one, just like we advocated for one last year. Partly because, I mean, I ask because, for example, one of the things I've been trying to get around and talk to different people, mm -hmm. I went to a PTO meeting yep. last week, and I said, and I said, I'd like to fill you in on where we are in the budget, but the problem is a lot of it I don't really know, yep. but my best guess is, we're going through the override you know, thing again, and therefore, you guys ought to be getting organized now rather than waiting until, you know, the last week, you know, the first week of May or something like mm -hmm. that. Well, and I think history has shown it's not something that is asked for every year. You, you have to expect that periodically you can't right. live right. under, I don't want to say an arbitrarily imposed cap and not expect to hit that ceiling on occasion. As, as, as we said during the school budget presentation, we have $248,940 of requested growth in education. We have 100... How much that is for the elementary school? Elementary school is 114494. Okay, I didn't know the other. I forgot about Franklin Tech. Yep, yes. yep, tech school. And that's enrolled... I was wondering where the other number came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Because I knew yep. Frontier and ours. So. Yep. And that went up this year. That went up this year, too. exactly right. Franklin Tech is up $69,000. Transportation, Frontier is up 58000 So, again, the gross numbers. Education request to the town of Sunderland is up 248940 We have new growth of $163,000-ish. I don't know how else you're going to do it, right? right? 
You're not gonna, we've been through this, we've been to this dance before where we say, well, we're gonna do the override, and if it fails, you can't go to Franklin Tech, 19 communities, you're not gonna flip 19 communities, and the track record of <coughs> more than one community having a similar problem with uh, yeah, Frontier, you're done. So it all falls on the town side. And you know, if whatever the number ends up being, I hope there's enough long-term memory in the community to remember what happened when we were at the $700,000 mark. And be like, ah, you guys are kidding. Yeah, no. Um, I will never forget someone in my driveway saying, I really didn't think it was that bad. No kidding. Sorry. I think, yeah. that, that, I think a lot of that falls on civic apathy. I think. Yeah, I think generally speaking. I like, totally yeah. get it. We need to be able to engage people. So that ties into your comment about giving people warning about why this needs to happen. Well, we're about a month behind, but we should have been. But we numbers had to gel. Yeah. I mean, that's where I want to come, just so I can yeah. get a little better. You know, I, you know, I can report back. Look, this is yeah. where we're at. Sure. Let, start letting people know. Yeah. But I, I, think I, would, I would say, I would say, you know, a year ago, we kind of got chuckled at. You know, there were signs saying, "Give me three hundred thousand dollars, so I can go to the, so I can have it, boss." Remember that sign? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, guess what? We we weren't kidding. Well, I think that the numbers are a little different, but the theme is still the same. Yeah. In, in terms of you know what the issues are, and that part hasn't changed, and. You know, this is one of the things that, you know, we live in a democracy and in order for it to work, you can be apathetic all you want, but don't complain when it falls apart. Democracy takes work and effort. And if it doesn't, right. it's our fault. Right. Good well, point. I think, we let it fall apart. I think the changeover for the insurance can help. Oh, yeah. For now. But I think we have to understand that, you know, you look at the, the numbers of trends. going up to 10 you know, not more than yeah. 11 mm -hmm. a year. Right. That means potentially 11 a year can be going down yep. in the future. So right. that's going to be stuff. things that we need to be able to communicate to people. Right. These don't go away. Great points. Great points. And it's not to say we don't put pressure on the administration to keep the cost oh, down. Yeah. <laughs> on the right. contrary. <laughs> we, 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 we use those, you know, we don't have Putin helping us with the back channels, yeah, but, that's right. you know, <laughs> we, we do make a phone call every now and then going, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Can you look at this? Can you look at that? I think that's been part of a, part of a, a very active discussion. Yeah. Well, that killed, that killed two whole sections yeah. of our agenda all in one big lump. Was well, good, and I think the thing is, is you know, in terms of the apathy thing, this isn't exciting stuff, but it's important no, stuff. Definitely not. You know, it's it's what keeps everything moving and keeps the potholes, which seem to be cropping up like spring flowers. You know, getting filled. It's capital. Potholes got a lot better when they yeah. had that cold warm day. Well, right, because yeah. George had enough time to fix them. They did a bunch of hot patch work. Yeah. Right. Got immensely better. He got in there just the day before we got all that rain. So, it, and it's been tough no, but the for stuff people to fix it. Stuck. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Not coming out. So, so Peter, on the on the list, if I could just circle back, Mr. Yes, Chair, on, on the, the current capital list for nineteen, the elementary school has replacement of the of the hot water system, and uh, for seventeen five and uh, security camera upgrade, security system upgrade of fifteen five. That's on this year's capital budget. There was. Uh, let me just. Total schools. There's, there's, yes, but the history is that in December, the school committee was presented with uh, basically, we need your vote so we can forward these two items to the committee. Yep. Okay. And no further information about sure. like, what else we might not have included. Right. Okay. Or why we came up with these two as a priority. And then since then, they've had some sort of boiler. Yeah, oh, a sec a section, section of a boiler. Losing bill. another yeah. section of yeah. a boiler yeah. and so on. So, you know, I wanted, one of the reasons I asked Craig and Bob to come was not only explain those two items, but also just talk about, you know, if there's any others that are sort right. of like. Which are pending list You know, what, what his priority might be. And if you looked at the list and you said, geez, you know, I think this ought to be the priority, you could actually possibly have a 
you know, a, a valuable discussion right. there. Get something done. And again, it's important to bear in mind we're, we're paying, I think last year we, we appropriated, I don't know, $38,000 for an architect and an architectural team to do the full assessment of all of our fixed assets. And that's really important baseline. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So on the capital stabilization fund, can I make that move since we're like near that part of the agenda? Yeah. This is the, we, we're up against the clock with, res, not tonight, but with respect to the annual town meeting and the raise and appropriate for the capital stabilization. So good. May I? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Uh, move to assess an additional $110,381 in real estate and personal, personal property taxes for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2018, for the purpose of funding the capital stabilization fund to be expended for municipal capital purposes included in Mass General Law, Chapter 44, Section 7 and 8. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So that, that vote right there it happens each year uh, as part of the general law to add to the rate the funding source for the capital stabilization. It was two years. The process was to adopt at town meeting the statute, create the fund was step two. Step three was to establish the base number, and that was the ballot question, and then approve the first year's budget. So there's four steps. Subsequent years after that, the Board of Selectmen can raise inside of the statute, inside of the cap. We can't go above 2.5% increase every any given year. So that vote you just took basically establishes that as a source of funds for projects. Just for capital yeah, stabilization. Doesn't make, any, doesn't make any decisions about what projects are nope. going to be funded. Nope. Right. It's, it's the funding source for the capital stabilization fund. Yep. And then we've got the capital committee that does the yep. recommendations. Yep. Thank you. And that's an annual. It has to it'll be boards yeah. forever. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Any other budget discussions tonight? Thank you. All right. And we'll get our fair share. To come, so. It's coming. All right. Hey, to <clears throat> folks, to have more folks here for yes. next week Great. of the uh, Maya. That'd be helpful. Yeah. Make that decision. Good. Great. We'd like to get that some movement, whichever direction we choose. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. All right. We'll circle back to our minutes. We've got minutes from February 28th. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. All right. And then we have one more for minutes from March 5th. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Who's on that? So that takes care of our minutes. Um, any board of selectmen updates? <clears throat> I'd just like to uh, uh, mention the passing of, uh, I would call a uh, A fine gentleman, uh, Stanley Wozlowski died this past week, 91 years old. Stan, uh, Mr. Woz, to, he was Mr. Woz to most of the kids that grew up around here. He was a, uh, a baseball coach. Uh, he had uh, two daughters, two sons that were very involved in town. And i uh, just like to, um, I, I mean, Mr. Woz was involved with the uh, water district forever um i don't know um i know when my father-in-law passed away mr was made a point to stop down and see my mother-in-law all the time um, didn't have to but uh he always did he was a fine he was a fine fine gentleman and uh i'd like to offer my condolences to stan mike deb and patty Okay. Uh, no, I would cross that with that. I've spoken enough tonight. I would, if I could just piggyback on something that Tom had said. Yeah. In all of my interactions, not nearly the, the uh, amount of duration that Tom has had uh, with with uh, Mr. Wazlaski. He was always smiling. Mm. Just always smiled. You could always laugh, and he had a genuine laugh. You never ran through one of the stop signs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't say I got on the bad side of him, Tom. <laughs> I wonder who did. <laughs> but it sounds like, I mean, it's, it's people like that that really help to make the community what it is. Right. 
make Sunderland the special town it is, I think. Uh, the only thing I have is an announcement here for the Sunderland Women's Club, a notice of award applications for uh, scholarships. The Sunderland Women's Club will be giving away three awards to high school seniors. The application deadline is May 1st, 2018. And you can applications are available here at the Sunderland Town offices at 12 School Street. And completed applications and attachments should be returned by May 28th to, and then we've got an address here, for the Sunderland Women's Club. Um, and I'll just quickly just tick off what they are. Any high school senior residing in Sunderland or high school senior who is a son, daughter, or grandchild of an out-of-town Sunderland Women's Club member is eligible to apply for these awards. There's the Francis M. Clark Fine Arts Award of $500, and that's for scholastic standing and achievement in the field of fine arts. The Kim Zuski Community Service Award of $500, and that's for scholastic standing and achievement in the area of community service. And then there's the Mildred Goodyear Math, Science, and Technology Award for $500. And that's determined by scholastic standing and achievement in the areas of math and or science and or technology. So mm -hmm. that's a nice, nice opportunity there for folks. That's, that's like that. You get more paper. I know, right? So with that, we'll pass off the baton to Sherry if you have any updates for this week. We did launch the new <clears throat> website last Wednesday. It looks great. Right. If anybody wants to take a look, um, thank you to Cindy Benich for a lot of work and effort into coordinating there that. Go on. Um, and let's see, uh, Tree USA designation. We talked about that last week. Yes. Uh, Linda Lapotka sent me the list of communities that have the Tree USA designation. Yep. I need to contact them, so I'll work on, on doing okay. that. Okay, and we have an appointment for public wares. I move the slate of public wares as presented, both from Delta Sand and Gravel, as well as from mm. Town Clerk Correspondence. Must be from Warner Brothers. I'm guessing. Um, All State. All State. 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 Sorry, State. All State. Yeah. Okay. For a second on that. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We just run on that. And then I come down to our other important dates. Remember, the last day to submit articles for the annual town meeting is Thursday, March 15th by 12 o'clock p.m. And our next meeting will be next Monday, March 19th at the same time, 6.30 p.m. We'll be back to do this all over again. It's more fun. Any more questions? No? All right. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.